Now we are going to configure gateway load balancing protocol or a GLBP. A GLBP is a Cisco proprietary protocol and it is a successor version of HSRP. GLBP also support load balancing with using single virtual IP address in multiple virtual MAC address. So suppose if we are looking for load balancing in VRRP and HSRP, we supposed to have a multiple group and multiple virtual IP address. But in case of GLBP, you don't need to configure anything else. You just require the basic configuration. In basic configuration, or you can say it natively support load balancing using single virtual IP address and uh, multiple virtual MAC address. So at same time, if you have a multiple gateway device, they actively going to send traffic to the WAN or to the ISP without any additional configuration. And we have a, uh, we have a three algorithm if we looking for load balancing like round robin, host dependent and weightage. Based on this we, we can configure load balancing but by default is a round robin. In GLBP it use uh, UDP as a transport using port address 3222 and multicast IP address as a 224.0.0.102. In GLBP, a gateway device which is layer 3 switch or a router can have a two role. One role known as an active virtual forwarder and another role is known as an active virtual gateway. If we come to know or if we uh, successfully understand active virtual gateway and active virtual forwarder, we come to know the magic of GLBP, how it going to perform load sharing or load balancing without any additional configuration or without configuring multiple group. So let's say, uh, let discuss little bit more about the AVF as well as AVG. So let go through line by line. A active virtual forwarder is a gateway which is actively forward data to the WAN. And AV, AVF is not going to respond our request which is coming from the LAN. And each gateway forward data toward WAN. As I told you earlier, if you have a multiple gateway, all gateways simultaneously going to forward data to the WAN. Each active virtual forwarder assign a unique virtual MAC address by a active virtual gateway. So if you have a three routers, excuse me, three gateway, your active virtual gateway going to assign a unique, IP, a unique MAC address. Let's say MAC address A, B and C. Uh, shortly we are going to discuss about AVG. Uh, then, then after you come to know how they are distinguished, uh, how we can distinguish between AVF and AVG. Also, active virtual forwarder working as a standby mode for active virtual gateway. So, actually, let me go through the example that makes sense to understand. Suppose we have uh, this topology, and uh, this is switch A multi-layer switch 1 and multi-layer switch 2. Suppose switch A is working as an active virtual gateway. So basically active virtual gateway means I am going to respond if any ARP request coming to me and rest of these two gateways not going to respond any ARP request. Since they are a only active virtual forwarder, they they, they only transfer data from LAN to WAN. They are not going to respond any ARP request. So any device which has the highest priority going to become as an active virtual gateway. An active virtual gateway by default use round robin and assign, uh, and assign multiple virtual gateway. So for example, if uh, there is a device, let's say host one coming for ARP request and he want to know what is the virtual MAC address for a particular IP address or a virtual IP address. 
एक्टिव वर्चुअल गेट वे गोइंग टू रिप्लाई योर एक्सक्यूज मी द वर्चुअल माइक एड्रेस इज जीरो वन फॉर एग्जाम्पल देन होस्ट वन गोइंग टू यूज दिस वे इन ऑर्डर टू सेंड डेटा टू द इंटरनेट लेट से होस्ट टू कमिंग फॉर कम कमिंग फॉर वर्चुअल मैक एड्रेस अगेन एक्टिव वर्चुअल गेट वे गोइंग टू रिस्पॉन्ड विद द नेक्स्ट वर्चुअल मैक एड्रेस विच इज जीरो टू नाउ होस्ट टू सेंडिंग डेटा यूजिंग दिस वे लाइक वाइज इफ दिस डिवाइस कमिंग फॉर आर रिक्वेस्ट इट गोइंग टू रिप्लाई विथ देयर ओन वर्चुअल मैक एड्रेस सो साइमटेनियसली इट गोइंग टू सेंड डेटा using multiple virtual gateway in single virtual ip address so what happen if this device goes down another device going to be work as a active virtual gateway along with the active virtual forwarder so a device which is active virtual gateway can also work as a active virtual forwarder so i am currently forwarding traffic and also responding the arp request so let's say if we going through the notes uh for each virtual mac address one active virtual forwarder is active in rest of vrf is standby what is mean by this let's say if this host come to know the virtual mac address or uh, the virtual mac address of gateway is 01 let's say currently i am forwarding data using this switch if this switch goes down immediately switch 2 or switch a going to work as a active for this virtual mac address so currently since you sending uh, you transfer the traffic toward the internet we are listening for this virtual mac address if you goes down then another going to take over this is how your glbp going to work shortly we going to configure this one and then we come to know clearly or exactly uh, likewise if you talking about active virtual gateway if you have a multiple device or a multiple gateway there is a single gateway can be work as a active virtual gateway which basically means respond the arp request and can respond more than one unique mac address as as i told you earlier so using multiple uh, virtual mac address in single virtual ip address we going to perform load balancing in glbp gateway with uh, gateway which have the highest priority become as a active virtual gateway in load uh, in fact if you talking about active virtual gateway load balancing algorithm can be changed from the active virtual gateway so basically what by uh, what is mean by this line if this uh, if this gateway is working as active virtual gateway from where we can change the behavior of load balancing like as we discuss we have a three way or three three algorithm we can go for round robin host dependent as well as wetis so using this three method we can perform load balancing using a single virtual ip address in multiple virtual mac addresses so let's go through the configuration that makes sense to understand so same topology i would like to use in glbp as well before going to the actual configuration of glbp i would like to check the basic internet connectivity on both switches and as we can see we do have a internet connectivity so next process is going to configure glbp on switch virtual interface 1 glbp along with the group number from 0 to 1000 23 in my case i am going to use group number 1 and ip address going to be 10.10.10.254 same thing i need to do on switch number switch number 1 so glbp group number 1 ip address 10.10.10.254 
So what we, what we going to expect from this configuration, this is the basic configuration of GLBP. There should be, uh, there should be multi-layer switch to work as a active virtual gateway as well as active virtual forwarder. But switch one should only work as a active virtual forwarder. So currently I am forwarding traffic but I am not responding ARP request. But switch two should be uh, should be respond ARP request because currently it is working as an active virtual gateway since the priority going to tie up of both switches and my IP address is higher than switch one IP address. So let's say, let's see what is the result. And one more thing I would like to discuss. Here we have two devices in group. So we supposed to have a two virtual MAC address. For virtual MAC address one, I'm going to actively forward traffic to the internet. For another or a virtual MAC address two, switch one should going to forward traffic toward the internet. So let's check the configuration or a result. As we can see in multi-layer switch 2, uh, group 1 state from standby to the active for forwarder 1 or for uh, virtual mic address 1, I am uh, working as the active router. Likewise on switch number 1, for forwarder 2, I am currently, uh, currently active which basically means if we check the result do so glbp in brief we can see uh, priority is 100 and for active virtual gateway who is responding ARP request I am standby mode and a router which has IP address 10.10.10.2 that router, excuse me, that gateway is working as an active virtual gateway or basically it also responding the ARP request. But for MAC address 0102, I am active. For if any packet coming for uh, coming which has the destination MAC address, this one, I am going to forward that traffic to the internet. But I am also listening for this virtual MAC address or virtual MAC address number 1. Same thing we can check on switch number 2. So let's say do so glbp in brief. I am the active router or active virtual gateway and standby is 10.10.10.1 or another word it is switch 1. For virtual MAC address 0101, I am actively working, but I am listening for the second virtual MAC address. So now we also check the end result using the host. So let me trace route 8.8.8.8. And as we can see host 1 sending data from switch 2 and what about host 2. Excuse me, 8.8.8.8. .8 host 1, excuse me, host 2 should send data from switch 1. We can also check the ARP, uh, ARP table. So let me show ARP. Excuse me, let me show the ARP. This is my default gateway IP address, which is 10.10.10.254. And this is the virtual MAC address of default gateway, which is 101. In case of host number 2, so ARP, it is 102. So host 1 sending data from the switch 2 and host 2 sending data from switch 1. If host, excuse me, if switch 2 goes down, let me set this, uh, set this VLAN interface of switch 2. And as we can see, switch 1 should going to take over rest of responsibility. So let me check it out. I am the active virtual gateway as well as actively I am forwarding traffic for both of virtual MAC address 
uh, actively forwarding traffic to the internet which is which destination MAC address is this one so currently switch one is working for both actively working for both virtual MAC address and let is let configure no shutdown on switch 2 we also need to enable primson because primson is by default disabled so glbp group number one and let's say primped is going to enable so again same thing we can configure primped delay minimum and maximum and whatever you want to for basic configuration you just required only one command glbp group number along with the virtual ip address and if we looking to uh, send the data actively using switch 2 because both virtual mic addresses data currently forwarded by the switch 1 because as we know the primson is disabled and since, since primson is the same as a uh, hsrp excuse me the priority is the same so i'm not going to work as a active virtual gateway until priority going to be changed so glbp group 1 and this time i'm going to change the priority like 120 so i should work as a active gateway router switch 2 supposed to respond our request because my priority is higher than switch 1 priority as well as i have also configured the primson which basically means every time when I am sending traffic to the other gateway or sending hello message to other gateway, I am going to tell them, please let me make as an active gateway or active virtual gateway. So this, this is the basic configuration which we required in order to accomplish uh, gateway load balancing or a first half redundancy protocol using gateway load balancing. In additional, we can also go through GLBP group number one. Like we can select the load balancing method. For example, load balancing, host dependent, round robin, and based on the weightage. But for basic configuration, I'm not going to do uh, this half, uh, these three uh, algorithm right now. And finally, again, I'm going to check how I'm going to send data to the internet from the host. Host 1 sending data to the internet using switch 2. And what about host 2? From switch 1. So th this is the default behavior or a default algorithm, which is also known as round robin. In your case, you can change the load balancing algorithm excuse me algorithm using host dependent or a weightage and rest of thing going to be the same as we can see like name primson priority timer and we have another thing like weightage using weightage we can enable tracking so we know very well what is a tracking and how it going to affect in first half redundancy protocol so this is all about in this video, in upcoming video we are going to discuss about IPv6 first half redundancy protocol.